You know, chipping doesn't have to be that hard. In these next three videos, I'm going to share with you some of the real secrets to making chipping easy. People have told me time and time again this has helped them tremendously on their short game, and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go and get started. It's so common to see players chunk and thin shots around the green, but what if I told you it is really simple to hit clean chip shots day in and day out, really close to the hole, if you know the right technique. I'm going to go over some of the biggest mistakes that you can make, and if you're making these, man, you're making chipping hard. Let's go and get started. All right, so mistake number one, putting the ball too far back in your stance. And usually this comes also with putting your feet too far apart. So you do want to hit down on this golf ball. I do want to be hitting down, hitting the ball first and then the ground in front. I may clip a little bit of the grass before the ball is completely fine. And I also want to have forward shaft lean. So I want my hands leading in front of the club head when I hit this shot. Now to do that, it's really easy to think, well, I can just put the ball back in my stance. That's going to basically make it where I have to hit down because there's really no way to scoop up when I'm back here on the back of my stance. And my hands are definitely going to be in front when they're like this. But if my feet are this far apart and my weight is also on my left side, like we've heard, you know, basically everybody says, this ball is way far back of where my low point is. So if my weight's on my left side, I'm gonna be kind of grounding out or the low point of my, my swing arc would be kind of under my, the inside of my left shoulder here. So that would be somewhere around here. When I put this ball this far back in my stance, the, really the only way to reach to it is to start to chop down too far, very much descending into the golf ball. It's very easy to do that and just cold stub it. And we do a couple of those and what ends up happening is our brain says, I sure as heck don't want to do that anymore. That's super embarrassing. Let me try to not hit the ground now. And I start to get a little bit of this chicken wing type action, or I try to pull the club up from slamming into the ground and I end up getting one of these. Where you just kind of top it across or skull it across the green, your arms fold up. Basically the most embarrassing things that can happen because now you're deathly afraid of just slamming the club in the ground or sculling it across the green. Yeah, that's no fun, not a good way to play golf. If we get the right ball position, things get a lot easier. So I like to put the feet much closer together. It allows me to rotate more easily through the shot, which I'll get to here in a second, but it also allows me to play this ball kind of on my left heel here. So depending on where the camera's lined up, this may not be perfectly lined up, but I want the ball to be on the left heel. That way when my weight is on my left side, now my ball is there too. So the left inside of my left shoulder is kind of directly just barely in front of the golf ball. So my low spot is really good, is really good in relationship to where the golf ball is. So now I can have those hands forward. I can hit just a basic bump and run chip here. And that's going to be pretty solid results time and time out. Even if I get a little too down in it, I hit a little too much ground. It's going to be fine because my low point is going to be just in front of that golf ball with that ball back in my stance not going to be good. I'm going to feel really jerky over top of this ball. Number two would be decelerating. One of the worst things that you can do is making too big of a backswing. A lot of times I'll see players make a big backswing and all of a sudden they're slowing down. Man, that makes me nervous just even thinking about it. That's going to be very inconsistent. So I'd like to see roughly the same length backswing as you have follow through. That makes it really easy to make sure I'm accelerating through the shot and I'm gonna make that good, clean contact. And it's not really gonna feel like I have to do that much work to make it happen. So there, I even chunked that one just a hair, but because my low point was good, because I accelerated through it, it rolled out and it ended up just as good as if I'd hit it perfectly clean. All right, so the next one is locking up your legs. This is a really, really tough one. The reason this one is so prevalent is because it makes sense at surface level. If I think about, I'm gonna, keep my legs dead still, I'm not going to move my legs, I'm just going to go upper body, well that eliminates one of your degrees of freedom. If I eliminate the legs, I should be more consistent, there's less things that can go wrong. Unfortunately, when you do this, when you lock up those legs, now I have to do everything with my upper body and my arms. So I tend to get way too handsy, my wrist is going to tend to break down like this, might get a little bit of a chicken wing there, that's all coming from not rotating the lower body and the knees. So if I do this properly, I want to go ahead and have my knees pivot as I'm coming back and through. One thing that really helps with this is getting your feet a little bit more open toward the target. I don't like to have my feet square like this because I feel like I'm having to use my hands to go across my body. When you look at really good chippers and pitchers of the golf ball, they're almost all going to set up with their feet slightly open to where the target is lined up. So I like to have this front foot open and the back foot 
kind of facing forward the target too. And that's gonna help me to get my knees rotating. From there, I'm not worried about keeping my knees still at all. I'm gonna go ahead, let my knees rotate back and through, and that's gonna give me a good feeling of rhythm. And it's gonna give me a good, you know, fluidness through the golf ball to hit it really clean. If I point my feet forward, if I lock up my lower body, I'm all hands and arms, it's gonna be a disaster. You're just gonna hit so many thin ones and chunks, it's gonna be really miserable doing it that way. You may be able to do that if you're using a super low lofted club and you're not very far from the hole. Here I'm a little bit farther. If I was only 10 or 15 feet from the hole and I was using a seven iron, maybe I could use more of a bump and run type putting stroke and just have my arms go back and through. The problem with that is once I get any farther than that, this simple putting stroke is not gonna be fast enough. I couldn't use a putting stroke to get the ball from here to that, that hole. So I have to start breaking everything down. That's when it goes out of whack. So it's not that you can't use a putting stroke to chip. It's just, you can only do that when it's really close. Once it gets a little farther, it just makes it impossible to make that happen. Lastly here, I wanna have my weight on my front foot, but again, I wanna make sure that it's not my feet way far apart like this. I'm gonna have my feet close together so my feet are fa fairly balanced. They don't feel like it's way out of whack. Like I don't feel like I'm like this when I'm over it and I'm way to the left. I'm just favoring my left side a little bit. My heels are only gonna be not even a golf club head width apart. And then from there, with my weight staying a little bit left, I feel like I can just pivot around that left leg and my knees and my body are gonna rotate on through. You see, if I do that, I can get really consistent results. I just need to learn to aim a little bit more to the left. But those are all hit pretty clean. Follow those tips and you'll hit clean shots too. And let's really get this bunker wet. So I'm not playing around here. This is a true bunker, wet bunker. I'm gonna let this, this soak in for a second. I'll be right back. You ever hit out of the really soft flies and you swing hard and the ball just barely gets up on the green with those bunker shots? Or maybe you get into a hard pan lie and the ball just shoots 30 feet over the green. How do we know how to hit out of both soft and hard lies when we're in the bunker? That's exactly what I'm gonna go over in this video. There's a couple secrets to this, and once you know those, it makes it really easy to get out of any lie. Let's go ahead and get started, knock some of these bunker shots really close. All right, so first let's talk about, you know, a nice normal lie or a fluffy lie. There's plenty of sand, the ball's sitting nicely. We can really go ahead and hit this one hard. Now with this type of a shot, you wanna make sure that you have this, the face really open. And what this does is it exposes the flange on the bottom of the club. So there's this big chunk of metal that's sticking down into the sand, kind of acting like a rudder. And when you open that up, now it's gonna glide through the sand. So the, your club's gonna come down, it's gonna hit the sand and then slide through it without digging really deep. So if I hit this one here, I'm gonna have the face wide open. Number two, I wanna go ahead and get my feet fairly wide and really kind of feel like I'm digging in with my feet. This is a big key because it's gonna help me to feel how soft the sand is. If my feet sink way down in, I know I'm gonna have to swing really, really hard. If my feet sink in a little bit, kind of normal sand like this, I know I'm still gonna have to swing pretty firm, but not quite as hard as I would on say this 60 foot shot with really, really soft sand. As a rule of thumb, you probably need to swing at least twice as fast as you think you do. I took a, a radar, actually a GC quad, it has a high speed cameras that'll read how fast the club is moving. I found that basically the swing speed you would use for an absolutely full sand wedge or lob wedge out of the fairway is the exact same swing speed that you would use in a greenside bunker. So if I'm gonna hit this, this shot 60 feet, I'm gonna hit it just as though I'm in the fairway and I'm hitting a full strength shot. Really go after it really hard, even more aggressive than you would on a normal shot. So face open, that exposes the flange. That keeps it from digging. Digging my feet to feel how soft the sand is. If it's a little soft, I'm gonna absolutely take a rip at this thing as hard as I can swing. Number three, I'm gonna play the ball slightly up in my stance and I'm gonna keep my weight on my front foot pretty much the entire time. Now from here, I'm gonna feel like my club goes vertical. I don't wanna feel like I'm swinging around my body in the sand. I wanna swing a little more vertical and I wanna pop that club down into the sand, really hit at it aggressively. Now, if I can do that, I should be able to draw a line four to six inches behind this golf ball and my club should enter the sand somewhere back around that line. So here, let me go ahead and do it through that. Open up, big swing, wide feet, and I'm really gonna thump this sand. There we go, hit a nice one there. So 
So I really feel like I had to swing super hard to get it pretty close on this 60 foot shot. A little short of what I would have wanted to have happen. I should have swung just a little bit harder than that. It's that simple, but that's an acceptable result from being farther away. Typically when you get more than 20 or 30 feet out on a bunker shot, they get pretty tricky because I have to really swing so hard to get it there. Now, another thing that, that I find really messes people up with this, they just don't open the face enough because you're not used to swinging that hard. What I'll see most players do when they get in the bunker is they'll square up this face. Then if I start to swing easier, so let's say I square this face up, I'm gonna do this the wrong way. If I swing hard like I should swing in a bunker shot, let's see where this one goes. That shoots way over the green. That one flew completely over the green. So if you have that square face, you instinctively know, well, I can't really swing very hard. Let me take something off of it. Well, with that square face, when I start taking something off of it, it gets really, really dicey. Notice how with this divot, how much it dug down into the sand. That's because I took away that bounce on the bottom. Square face, that leading edge is really sharp, and now it's gonna start to dig. So if I try to swing a little bit softer here with that square face, now I leave it in the bunker because I tried to swing softer. The first one sailed over the green. The second one, I, I made it a little softer. The club dug in the sand and I just didn't get to the golf ball. It didn't go anywhere. So you really have to, and this is something that I see basically everybody doing. You're not opening the face enough, but the reason you're not opening the face enough, you're just not swinging anywhere near hard enough. I want that face wide open and I want you to swing at this ball as hard as you can. Don't worry about hitting the golf ball. Just thump the club into the sand behind the golf ball. If I do that really hard, it's gonna be completely fine. That felt like a full wedge shot to me and I only hit it about 60 feet or so. So really be aggressive with it. Now let's talk about when you have those firm lies. Let me go ahead and grab this big Home Depot bucket of water here and let's really get this bunker wet. So I'm not playing around here. This is a true bunker, wet bunker. I'm gonna let this, this soak in for a second. I'll be right back. All right, so we got this soaking wet bunker. This is really gonna compact the sand. Usually after a rain, the bunkers are gonna get pretty hard. So you wanna adjust your technique here a little bit. When I normally play a shot, like I talked about, let's say this is a square face, I'm gonna open that face up probably a good 45 degrees, that leading edge of the club, 45 degrees open. When I set that down on the ground, that's gonna look like it's just facing straight up to the sky. You look at any PGA Tour event, that's what you're gonna see as far as the face, what it looks like. Now when this bunker gets harder, I'm gonna tend to skip if I do that. This big flange that sticks out of the bottom, if it's really pronounced like this, if I hit four to six inches behind the ball when the bunker's soft, it's gonna tend to skip and not dig, and I could thin that golf ball. So what I'm gonna do is instead of it being about 45 degrees open with the face, I'm only gonna be about 30 degrees open with the face. And instead of hitting somewhere in that four to six inches behind, now I wanna hit two to four inches behind the golf ball. So that's not where I'm aiming, but that's when my, my, my club very first comes into contact with the sand. I wanna feel like I'm aiming in a spot right behind the golf ball. And especially with this firmer, harder sand, I wanna feel like I hit down more. That way I can penetrate into the sand. And what I don't wanna have happen, the worst thing that could happen is if I hit, I don't get down enough, I don't thump the sand hard enough, and it skips off the sand and goes back up into the golf ball. So that's the one that skulls across the green. You get nervous, and then the next one, you make a really timid swing and you leave it in the bunker. Really frustrating. So the keys to so or harder sand, a little bit less open with the face. I'm gonna aim a little closer to the golf ball and I need to be ultra aggressive, even more aggressive than I was with my softer sand and making sure that I hit down. I don't wanna get timid with this. I'm gonna start thinning them and leaving it in the bunker if I do that. I wanna really concentrate on feeling like I'm just gonna slam this club into the ground behind the golf ball. So I really wanna have that downward hit, kinda of like that. I really wanna thump the sand with it. So that's exaggerated there. Let me go ahead and show you an actual shot here. So a little less open with the face, aiming a little closer to the ball, and I'm really hitting down more and still being very aggressive. There we go, and that ball came out a little bit hotter because the face wasn't quite as open but you can see here, I really thump the sand. I wanna, I wanna hit my club into that sand. If you follow those rules, you'll be able to get out of both soft sand and really hard sand. All right, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you some absolute secrets 
on pitching it like a pro. And I'm not talking about pitching it okay or decent or pretty good. I'm talking about absolutely being a magician around the greens and being able to feel like you can set up over a shot like this and hit every single one of them with spin close to the hole to almost feel like you could just toss it up there within tap-in range every single time. It can be that easy. I'm on a fairly tight lie here. Some people might get nervous on this. This isn't really long, fluffy grass. You'll see all these are coming out clean and I'm just chopping them right up there by the hole. It can be easy once you learn the right technique. Now, there's a couple things I'm gonna go over in this video. I'm gonna go over what I call the front shoulder pivot and we're gonna talk about how to get absolutely laser dialed in on your low point. You notice all those look like I was barely just brushing the grass and I had an open space 60 degree wedge, but they're coming out low with a lot of spin. I wanna share with you the secrets on how to make that happen. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump into the details on this. I'm gonna break it down for you piece by piece. Now, as I started diving more and more into short game and really trying to master it myself, I realize it is extremely frustrating because there's so many different styles. You see some people saying to lock the hips in the lower body and use more of an upper body like a putting type stroke. You see some people talking about rotating the body. Some people are gonna tell you that you need to have a little more of a cut swing. Some people are gonna tell you you need a little bit more of a draw swing, plate off the toe, plate off the center, have the hands low, have the hands high. You're hearing all this different stuff. And I'm not saying that a lot of that doesn't work. And really, I think you can do a lot of different styles and make it work. I'm gonna share with you the style that I have found works the best. And I'm gonna break it down for you piece by piece. And I'm gonna give you some drills that are gonna seem a little counterintuitive, honestly. But once you try those out, you're gonna see the results firsthand. You're gonna see me hit some great shots here. And I know if you follow this, you're gonna have a lot of success with it. So this isn't the only style that works, but this is a style that if you practice this, you do the drills that I'm gonna give you here, make sure you bookmark this because you're gonna to wanna to refer to it because you're gonna be chipping and pitching it awesome when you're doing this. So first off, I want my feet very close together. If my feet are farther apart and I'm using the kind of locked lower body style where I let my upper body do most of the work, I do not like that at all. And the reason is once you get a little farther away from the green like this, then locking your lower body, you really have to use so much upper body and hands and arms, like you really start to jab at it. It can be not that good once you get farther away. Now, if I have a little 10, 12 foot putt or a 10 or 12 foot chip, that can work perfectly fine. But as I get a little bit more distance, I wanna go ahead and let that body rotate. I want my knees really close together. I want my feet really close together. I like to have my stance a little bit open as I go over here in a second, but I want them close together. That way I can pivot and rotate back and through and just as I was gonna to toss a golf ball up to the hole. So that's the first piece. I almost feel like your, your heels are within two or three inches of each other would be really good on a shot like this. And I really want my body to rotate back and through so that it's creating a momentum. And that's what we'll go over a common theme in all this is that you wanna have a momentum to your body and let it go back and through rather than, rather than trying to get jerky or jabby. Number two, I wanna have the face a little bit open. Simply for this, it gives me a little bit more margin for error for a couple reasons. As I open the face, this flange on the bottom of the club starts to get exposed and it helps it glide through the turf, which means less chunking and less thinning. It also allows me to get a little more forward shaft lean without de-lofting the club too much. So here I have a 60 degree wedge. I'm gonna open the face a little, that probably turns it to, let's say 65 degrees, something like that. And then I'm gonna lean the shaft forward a little bit, which turns it back to its, you know, a little less than 60 degrees at a dress. So that way my hands can be leaning in front. My hands can be leading the way as I make contact to this, which will make the contact more consistent and I'll still have enough loft there to generate some spin. So here, a little bit open, the hands are leading the way. And again, I'm rotating my body every single time, getting that nice clean contact, even made one. All right, so this is gonna be pretty good. I feel like this is gonna be a, a nice video where everything's gonna start to come together for me. So, we're off on a good start here, feet close together, body rotating, play the face a little bit open, play the hands a little bit up. Here's the part that is the most important of any of it. It's contact. You'll notice when I'm hitting these shots that I'm brushing the turf. I'm not 
digging down into it. So I'm not playing my hands forward with this late leading edge square and hitting down into that where I'm really chopping down into the ground. If I do that, I could start to lay the side over it. I could start to chunk some and thin some. So we definitely don't want that to happen because we're gonna be inconsistent if we start to hit down into the ground too much. I'm also letting the momentum dictate my low point. So as I swing back and through here, as I go back and through, I'm feeling like, almost like I could take two fingers and just barely kind of let the momentum of the club swing as I let it fall out of my hands. That's how loose I'm holding it here, but let the momentum of this club swing and I could brush the turf. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna open the face slightly, I'm gonna let my body pivot and I'm just gonna take a couple fingers here in my left hand and I'm gonna feel like I just brushed the ground. That's the feeling that I wanna have to create that. So the reason the ball is coming out low is not because I'm de-lofting the club. The reason the ball is coming out low is because I, I do have a little forward shaft lean, but I'm hitting it so clean. What's happening is this club face is grabbing the ball. There's a lot of friction there. And because I'm, I'm hitting down on it slightly or level with the ground, that ball is grabbing the club face and coming out lower. It's not the loft on the club that's making that go fairly low. And on this one, I'm actually gonna play the face open again. You'll see this by looking at my club face, it's fairly open. And I'm gonna try to hit one really low just with a lot of really good friction. There you go, you see that never got much higher than pin high. I hit it a little hard trying to get more spin on it. And you'll see that it checked up, I almost landed to the hole and only rolled out five or six feet. Same thing there, not really getting much above pin high and you can see those checking up right by the flag. So the only way that can happen is getting good friction on there. The only way that you can get good friction is really control your low point by letting the club momentum dictate where you ground out. And you can see that one was nice and low there too. Let me hit one more, and then I'm gonna show you the best drill to get the feel of this momentum for yourself. And to really dial in on how I can come down and make the cleanest contact possible every time. So let's jump up on the green. I'm gonna show you drills that works great for this. All right, now here's the part that I warned you about that's gonna seem a little bit odd. So I'm here on the putting green. They just recently um, aerified the green. So um, I wouldn't recommend doing this on the course like I am today, but the green's a little bit rough anyways. I do this on the chipping green. Find right by the edge of the green where you're not really gonna mess anything up, even if you take a little bit of a divot as you're first learning this. But after you've done it a while, I'm telling you, you're gonna get just so precise, laser-like precision on your low point. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So what we're trying to be able to do here, if you're gonna be a fantastic pitcher and chipper of the golf ball, is I have to be able to control when my club comes down, I need to be able to have it hit the ground in the same spot every single time and at the same depth. So you can see I'm swinging hard enough there to where I'm actually roughing up. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a smack. You can see some sand kind of popping up as I'm doing that. And because my club face is a little open, it's just the bounce of the club is kind of skipping on the turf. It's not that leading edge. If you expose that leading edge, you're gonna have difficulty digging into the ground. So if I expose that leading edge, I can hit a little too far down, chunk it and it pops up. I can hit it a little thin and it shoots across the green. If I have the face a little bit open like this, I can still get a little forward shaft lean and that leading edge just isn't quite exposed there. I'm never gonna dig. You can see I've, I've hit this ground 10, 15 times and I'm not digging down there. Now there's a difference here in how you've probably seen people say that before and you probably think, well, you know, Clay, I would just do that. If I could control it like that, I'd just do it. I'm gonna show you the technique that makes that possible. What you wanna do is almost feel like you focus on your left shoulder, almost feel like you have a little reverse pivot. So as I come back, I'm almost leaning left as I'm going my back. So I'm gonna exaggerate so you can see that. And then you'll notice I'm doing that a very small amount in my normal swing. So here I'm leaning left. And then as I come through, I'm falling a little bit back. And as I fall back, my hips extend. So I'm not doing this. That's the death move. I'm just keeping my chest down. That's the death move for chipping. I'm doing this, I'm leaning left. And as I fall back, now my body's moving back, my hips are moving forward. My hips are toward the target because I've rotated. And because I'm falling back a little bit, that controls my club from digging in the ground. 
I can feel like I'm throwing this thing in the ground as hard as I want to, but as long as I come back this way, what happens is that left shoulder rises and I feel like I couldn't chunk this thing if I wanted to, because as I fall this way, it just levels it out. It's like taking this club. Imagine I was gonna drop it into the ground like this. So I have the club here and I'm just gonna let this thing fall into the turf. But what happens when I lift my hand up? Right, as my hand starts to turn back up, it levels it out like a, like a plane coming into a runway. It comes down and it levels out and it's gonna come back up if it wants to. Same thing's happening here. I'm letting the momentum of the club swing and I'm letting the pivot of my left shoulder in my body make sure that that never digs down in the turf. That's why I can take just with one hand, I'll move this ball so you can see, I could take just with one hand and I could just brush the turf there every single time. It's not like I'm some fantastic athlete. I'm just using the momentum of the club and the pivot of my body to control that low point. So what I'm feeling there, a little forward shaft lean, I'm leaning this way, my left shoulder's coming down. I'm exaggerating here on that. You'll see me doing it more uh, to a smaller degree in the real one. And then as I come through, my shoulder leans back and that keeps me from digging. That's how you can get this low point control really, really good. And eventually what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to hit these golf balls off the screen and feel like we're never gonna take a divot. I hit that one about 30 feet in the air. I'm never gonna take a divot, I'm never gonna dig. And I could just sit in here and hit them all day. So I've hit two in a row. Both of those flew at least 30 feet. They ended up almost 50 feet from me and I didn't dig anything into the ground. I still hit the turf. I still brushed the grass a little bit, but you can look on the camera. You see there's no, there's no digging. I'm not roughing up that turf at all. So I'm making really nice, clean contact. Now I'm going a little farther. That one flew about 50 feet in the air. And I'm gonna go even farther than that here and make a little harder swing just to show you, you can ramp this up and go faster and faster once you get it down. And that's about the max I can do. That's about a 70 footer. That was just a little tiny bit thin there, but even for this drill, that would be pushing it. So I really just wanna do this, feeling that momentum of the club and just practice by hitting little five and 10 foot chips like that. Now here's the way you get your precision in on it. What's gonna happen is if you go straight to the turf, you're gonna get a little bit nervous you're gonna feel like you don't wanna dig down in there and you're gonna pick it up, or you're not gonna have that pivot down yet and it's gonna to wanna to dig on you. You're gonna chunk it one time and you're gonna to wanna to quit this drill. Here's how you wanna start with a bucket of sand. And I'll be honest with you, most people aren't gonna do what I say here. And most people aren't gonna get the success that you get if you do what I say here. But if you take the time to do this every day or at least seven times, I would say, here's how it's gonna happen. The first time you do this drill, you're gonna think, daggone it, this is impossible. I'm never gonna get this. This is so hard. I don't know what Clay's talking about. I can't feel the pivot. I can't feel my left shoulder. I can't feel the momentum of the club. It's really, really tough. The second time you do this drill, you're gonna think, man, that was hard, but oh, that one, I actually hit pretty decent. By the third time you do this drill, and the fourth and the fifth, it's gonna to start to feel pretty good. By the sixth and seventh time, it's gonna feel just completely natural, like you can just brush this turf every single time. It's not gonna be that hard for you. But if you quit after the first one, you're never gonna to get to the good stuff. So here's what I wanna feel. Again, it's like if this club was gonna sort of fall down in the ground, I'm lifting my hands up to keep it from digging there. I'm doing that by letting my shoulder come down. And you watch a lot of great pictures of the golf ball. The they're gonna look like they're leaning a little left and then as they come through, they're falling back this way, away from the target. So I'm gonna set up a little pile of sand about an inch tall here. And what I wanna do is I just wanna clip the very top portion of that sand. So I've hit that sand now, and I've made two swings. I barely touched it that time. Three swings, I'm just clipping little grains of sand off there. I missed it that time. But I'm just gonna fast forward here. Right, and I've rushed it now down to where all the sand pile's gone and there's nothing left. I'm gonna see how many strikes I can make with an inch tall pile of sand until I get down to the bottom. And if I can get four, five, or six little swipes where I just take a little bit of sand off and a little bit more sand off, a little bit more sand off, then I'm really controlling the low point. Now, you don't have to do that very much. 15, 20 swings 
and you'll be surprised how much better of a feel you have for this. And again, two, three, four days in a row, and now all of a sudden you have a really good feel to where you can just kind of pick it every single time. Now there's one missing piece with this. This shot is fantastic when you're fairly close to the green. Once you get outside, say, 35, 45 yards, it gets a little bit tougher to use this technique. There's actually a different technique that you want to use, but how do we dial in the distances there? It seems like the pros are really good from 50, 60, 70 yards, hitting it right on the number. Well, there's actually a system that you can follow, a framework that allows you to do this very, very consistently, and I'm gonna walk you through it in this next video. I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in a second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen, and don't worry if you don't see that card, just go down to the description below this video and click the link there and you'll get instant access to this technique that's gonna allow you to be right on the money on those distances. So I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go and get started. Well, I used to actually practice a lot in high school. This is one of my favorite things to do. I had a, a strip mowed down the back of my yard where I took the lawnmower. My parents probably hated this because I mowed it down to like half inch turf in the back of the yard because we lived on a farm and I would set buckets or towels along this and I would try to set them at those distances that I knew. And maybe I, I knew my, my 56 degree went right at 65 yards. So I'd set a bucket 65 yards away and I would go ahead and do my nine o'clock swing and I would try to fly it right into the bucket. And I'd be, get to where I could, I could tell for sure if I was gonna be a couple yards short or a couple yards long, just because it gets so ingrained when you get the rhythm and the finish the same every time. So we can use different length backswings to control the distance of our wedge shots. So for example, if we imagine that I'm a clock and six o'clock is directly down, my wedge would be at six o'clock or my, my arms would be at six o'clock. I can go back to a 7.30 swing and I can have the same finish and hit it a certain distance, or I can go back to nine or 10.30 and swing through to the same distance, finish point, and that's gonna control the distance that my wedge shots are gonna fly in the air. And I've gotta keep that ry rhythm and that tempo very, very consistent. If I vary my tempos, I can hit it all kinds of different distances. So for example, I could have a real quick tempo 730 swing and probably hit this 90 yards. I could have a, maybe not really that far, probably 50 or 60 yards. I could have a very slow, slow tempo 730 swing and hit half that distance. So I've got to get my distance the same. I've got to get my rhythm the same. That's the real key to it. And the second piece on there.